You can see there are a number of districts of, uh, of nickel deposits and the main area, main concentration of nickel deposits is in this southern area that, that we call the Yulgarn. And so our projects are in the northeastern part of, uh, of that, uh, that area. There are other project developments. Um, Rich has just spoken about the project in the, in the Musgraves. There are some other development projects shown in the, with the blue dots, apart from rocks. One of the things about the nickel deposits in the Yilgarn is that they are generally high grade um, versus the other types of deposits such as the uh, Nebo Babel project that Richard was just talking about which are generally a lower grade but often larger. <clears throat> so a little bit about the nickel market and this is just to add to what Martin said earlier this morning about, uh, about battery metals. The two types of um, nickel, class one nickel which is a pure form of nickel that uh, gets produced, um, is suitable for electric vehicle batteries. And that's about half the market, and that's represented by the LME and Shanghai stockpiles. Class two nickel is not suitable for batteries. That's an impure form of nickel that's mined, uh, open cut in the Philippines and Indonesia, and that forms about the other half of the market. What's happened over the last five years is that the supply of this class two nickel um, has depressed the nickel price because it can be produced very cheaply and so what we're now seeing is a decrease in production of class one nickel and so there's going to be a looming shortage of class one nickel which is very important in terms of finding enough nickel for electric vehicle batteries. So here is a, a, a couple of graphs to show you uh, what electric vehicle batteries are all about. Um, as Martin said this morning the nickel manganese cobalt battery is the main battery that's used for electric vehicles. The current uh, battery is the 111 battery, which is one part nickel, one part manganese, one part cobalt. But they are developing other batteries that will give a longer distance of travel for the electric vehicle. And the one in particular that is being worked on now is the 811 battery, which is eight parts nickel, one part manganese and one part cobalt, so obviously a lot more nickel is required for that battery. And the advantages of that battery is that it recharges to 80% within 20 minutes, so you can be driving on the highway, you can stop for a cup of coffee, recharge and then continue on your way. And so the implication of all of that is how much nickel is going to be required for electric vehicle batteries and just when is that going to happen. Now this is obviously open to um, debate. Here is one graph showing one scenario of uh, how the development of electric vehicles is, is seen. Currently market share is 2 or 3%. Prediction by 2025 could be up to 30% and then by 2030 basically all most vehicles will be electric. Just how quickly this, uh, this happens um, is, is obviously open to discussion but uh, the implication is that uh, there's going to be more nickel required for electric vehicle batteries as a result. Depending on which battery technology, if we stay with the current technology, you can see on the right hand side the requirements of extra nickel. If we go to the um, higher battery then, then the requirements for nickel are even higher. And the issue here is that there simply isn't enough um, supply of class one nickel to meet this demand. And as I said, you know, the, the supply of this cheap class two nickel has depressed the nickel price, so there's not as much class one nickel being produced. This is a graph from Wood Mackenzie, and it shows their prediction of the nickel price in the black line. The blue bars are their prediction of the nickel market balance. And so all of these uh, uh, bars here are all showing that there's going to be a deficit of production. In other words, consumption will exceed supply. They're predicting for the next eight years or so, which means that the stocks, which is the red line, will decrease. Obviously, that will put pressure on the nickel price and force the nickel price up. And so we'll get to this crunch point in about 2021 where stocks are going to be dangerously low. It's going to um, 
make a, a very strong um, push on the nickel price. The other thing I will just add is this green line here is the price that most uh, nickel developers are using in their forward projections for their projects in terms of what the long-term price might be. And it's the price that we've used in our studies as well. So you can see that, that it's higher than the current price, but it's well below what the predicted future price is going to be. So a little bit about our nickel sulphide discoveries in Australia. We have two projects. One is, uh, they're located here in just about the centre of Western Australia. Uh, one is uh, here called Mount Fisher, and then another one over here called Collier Abbey. And we are about 150 kilometres uh, in a straight line from the Leinster Perseverance uh, area where BHP Nickel West um, have operations. They have a processing plant there, and they have several mines. That's important to us because uh, we could truck our ore down here and process it here as one option, or we could build our own process plant up there. The resources we've defined in three deposits at this project are down to about 500 metres below surface, but we have done some drilling underneath and we've also found further mineralisation. So we're fairly confident that we can extend the mineralisation uh, and increase these resources. At the moment, the total resource is 4.2 million tonnes at 1.9% nickel. So our scoping study results, um, as I said, if we have an on-site concentrator with an upfront capital cost of $87 million Australian, we can produce free cash flow of 146 million with a rate of return of 44%. And our uh, C1 cash cost, which is basically our operating cost, and our all-in sustaining costs, which is the total costs, including capital, are in the second quartile of, uh, of producers. For the toll milling option, which is where we mine the material and send it down to BHP for, for processing, the upfront capital is lower because we don't have to build a processing plant. The rate of return is a little bit higher because the, the capital is lower, but the overall uh, return on the project is a little bit less. But it's a good option for us because Obviously, with the lower capital, we can, and we can do this a lot quicker. We've got some fairly detailed mine designs, and the different colours here are the different years of production and so forth. At the moment, the project has a six-year mine life, but we're fairly confident with extra drilling, expanding the resources, we can have that out to nine or ten years. We've done uh, metallurgical test work as well. Uh, we can produce a good quality concentrate with uh, low uh, penalty, low impurities. It meets all of the specifications. We get an 88% recovery, and we can produce a nickel concentrate around 13% nickel, which we can sell quite easily. We would produce about 500,000 tonnes of ore per year, and that would produce about 7,500 tonnes of nickel. So the resource extensions I talked about, uh, beneath the Camelwood deposit, for example, uh, where we've hit uh, all grade mineralisation there, our minimum mining width is 1.8 metres, and we've hit about 2.5 metres at 2.5% uh, below, below Camelwood. Over here, we've hit 4.3 metres at 2%, and both of those are 150 metres below the resource. So we believe we'll be able to increase these resources. We also have a very large tenement package. It's about 330 square kilometres, and the mineralised horizon, we've got coverage of about 40 kilometres of that. Those deposits I just showed you are just up here, so we've got a lot more to explore. We've already found some nickel at various uh, places along the belt, and in particular, we've got one deposit where we've done a fair bit of drilling, but we haven't to find a resource there yet. So we believe with a bit more drilling, we'll have a resource on that one. Over to the other project, which is, uh, we call that Collier Abbey. Now this project was uh, discovered by Western Mining. You, you heard Richard earlier um, say that Nebo Babel was discovered by Western Mining. They were a very active nickel explorer. 
This particular project was discovered in 2004 and at the time there was a lot of excitement in the market about the project and the valuation, the market valuation of the companies involved was about $300 million. We purchased this project for $150,000 uh, last year. We believe it's, it's underdone. Um, the project has not had a lot of work on, on it since that, uh, that time of discovery. So there are very good data sets. We've got quite, a, quite an extensive uh, area to, to explore. Here's one of the deposits. Uh, we're currently doing some metallurgical test work on that one. That's not, excluded, that's not included in our scoping study, um, but we're looking at including that. Uh, we, like I said, we're doing some metallurgical work. This one's a little bit different. It has some copper in it as well, and cobalt and platinum and palladium, so we may be able to get uh, um, those metals out as well. We've got about 15 kilometres of strike length to explore on this particular project, and so we think we can find some more deposits here as well. Just to uh, give you some information about the company, we've been uh, in, in, uh, listed on the stock exchange for almost 15 years, so we've been through the global financial crisis and so forth, we've survived. Um, we have just under 1.3 billion shares on issue, which is fairly typical for companies like us. Our share price is about one cent, which gives us a market capitalisation of about $12.6 million. But we also have cash and receivables of $12.8 million. So basically, and no debt, so basically we are trading at cash backing. So we're a very cheap company. Uh, you can see here our share price over the last year has been fairly flat and fairly disappointing, despite the good results we've been producing. Our shareholding is largely in Australia. We have one overseas shareholder uh, who is our major shareholder as a small fund in New York. So the opportunity to, to buy uh, rocks is clearly demonstrated on this, uh, this graph here. We've got cash and receivables of 13 million. We've got a project with an NPV somewhere between 58, 79 million. There's got to be value for that in our share price and it doesn't appear to be at the moment. So what I've graphed here is some of the other peer companies that are, have nickel projects like us. The dot is the size of their enterprise value. And you see here our enterprise value is basically zero. But these other companies, even though our projects have a higher NPV, our enterprise value is very low. So there's a great opportunity here to to buy our shares because I can't see them going down any further. Independent research, which I have out, uh, available if you, if you wish to obtain it, has valued us at 35 million or 2.6 cents a share. So just to summarise, we have high grade nickel sulphide resources in, in Western Australia, uh, totalling 4.8 million tonnes at 2% if we include all of those projects together. We've got impressive scoping study results We've all been talking about the upswing in nickel that's um, predicted to happen, so we believe there will be a, a major, major re-rating of our share price um, very soon. Thank you very much.